Uh, okay, Monsa Mother, we'll uh, straightly go to the parable. Okay, this parable, we know that our Lord spoke for so many parables. Uh, uh, today, we're going to see one parable that is mentioned in the book of uh, Luke, brother. Luke 15, chapter 8 and 9. Can you read, brother, Monsa Mother? Okay, brother. Uh, Luke 15. Okay, it's written here, Luke 15, 8 and 9. Mm. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek delightfully till she find it. And when she have found it, she call her friend and her neighbor, neighbors together saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Okay, good. So here, our Lord tells actually a parable about a woman having 10 pieces of silver. And just because she lo loses one piece of silver, she's so much of uh, concern for that one lost piece that uh, she makes her uh, house uh, you see, upside down. She lights a candle and searches for uh, that uh, lost coin. She sweeps the house and cleans the house. And as soon as she gets that uh, one silver coin, she rejoices <coughs> so much that uh, she calls all her neighbors and all her friends and tells them also to rejoice uh, with her. Why? Because she has got that last coin. Now imagine if uh, we are in that condition, will we do the same thing? Imagine uh, if we are having uh, uh, 10 coins, you see? If you lose uh, one coin, huh? if you have 10 rupees, if you lose uh, one rupee, and will we get uh, into so much of uh, concern that uh, we keep on searching that uh, one lost coin? Uh, will we uh, make the you see, house upside down? Uh, will we go light a candle and sweep the entire house until we find that one, one coin? Now, buying a candle itself will cost more than a rupee. And uh, who will uh, just concern about uh, one coin? But why did uh, this woman uh, take so much of interest for this one coin? And moreover, even after getting that coin, we will go and tell to our neighbors, you know, I lost uh, uh, one rupee today and I got that one rupee. Will we go and tell to all our neighbors or uh, all our friends and call them and tell them, you also rejoice with us? If you tell such a thing, everybody will think that we are mad. Therefore, this cannot be a literal statement at all. Matthew 13, chapter 34 and 35, Jesus tells that Jesus spoke the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. So whatever parable he has spoken, it is a concern of some secret about the kingdom of heaven. Now, to understand this parable, we need to understand a little bit of background about Israel. This uh, parable is actually speaking about uh, a custom uh, that was there in Israel, a marriage custom. In Israel, the marriage used to never take place immediately. First, they used to do the engagement. And after one year after the engagement, then only the marriage used to take place. And while the engagement is to take place, they is to give a few gift or few items as a token of love. Like today, while the engagement, what do the people do? They have put the exchange rings, engagement ring. That's a confirmation that we're going to get married. Until marriage, you see, these things has to be maintained by either party. So similarly, you see, huh? In this parable, actually, you see, uh, the 10 silver coins uh, are mentioned. In Israel, actually during the engagement process, the bridegroom side, they used to give a band on the head for the, you see, bride. And it used to have, you see, a 
a thing where you can uh, clamp uh, uh, silver coins uh, and uh, it used to have generally 10 silver coins uh, and it was the duty of that bride to cleanly maintain you see this uh, coins uh, until the day of marriage and show it to the bridegroom side or else the marriage would be cancelled. Imagine if the marriage is cancelled, will somebody marry that girl? Nobody would dare to come and marry the girl because everybody will think, oh, some problem is there with this girl. Oh, we, that is the reason marriage is, uh, got cancelled. So, in this case, it was a life and death matter. Hence, as soon as she lost that coin, she made her house upside down. You see, she lit the candle, swept the entire house. Why? Because her marriage will be cancelled and nobody would ever marry that girl. That is the reason as she, as she got that coin, she went and told to her neighbors. Why? Because the neighbors are the most dangerous person. You see, they immediately go and tilt everybody. Oh, you know, what has happened to the neighboring girl? She's not the, the, huh? the token of uh, engagement. She's not the kind. Immediately news will go to huh? the bridegroom. What will the bridegroom people do? They will cancel the marriage. Hence, uh, she told to her neighbors and friends uh, to rejoice. Now, what is the meaning of this one? We all know that uh, uh, that uh, church has got engaged to Christ. Great number of the read. 2 Corinthians 11, 2, brother. 2 Corinthians 11, 2, brother. I will read from this screen, brother. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous over you with godly jealous, jealousy, for I have exposed you to one husband that I may present you as a test person to Christ. Ah, so the church is engaged to Christ. So when will the marriage take place, sir? The marriage will take place at the second coming of our Lord. Read Revelation 19.7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife had made herself ready. Uh -huh. Marriage of the Lamb has come. The wife has made herself ready. That means she is prepared. So she has to be prepared. If you need to get married, and we need to prepare ourselves. Now, oh, what does this 10 silver coin signify? Huh? That means 10 is also important. Huh? If you take 9, no. If you take 1, that is also of no use. So, what are the 10 silver coins represent in the Bible? What is the meaning of silver in the Bible? In the Bible, silver represents the truth, the word of God. Read Psalms 12, 6, brother. The word of the Lord are pure words, a silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Mm, see, the word of God is like a silver uh, purified uh, seven times seven in the Bible is perfect. Perfectly pure is God's words. So, the word of God represents the ten silver coins. So, if you lose one, what will happen? Uh, marriage will get cancelled. So all the ten important truths are important in the Bible. But in that uh, parable, we see one coin was lost. So similarly, uh, you see when the church was there with Christ, uh, all the truths were there uh, with the church. Uh, you see, all the real truths uh, of doctrines, uh, they were, it was with the church. Uh, but as the days went on, when apostles and all died, the Bible was hidden in the dark ages. Uh, you see, in the Latin languages, there was no Bible at all. So what happened? Slowly, one coin got lost. So as soon as that one coin was got lost, when she realized, when the church realized that the important coin is lost, uh, they began to search in the house. Which is the house? You see, we are the household of faith. This is our house. In Church, among Christians only, this truth was sought again. How? The house was swept, swept, uh, swept, made clean. 
this happened during the reformation you see what happened ah uh, when the protestants you see they revolted against the roman catholic and the reformation started all the hidden things uh, in the bible was uh, you see made clear there was a lot of dust uh, of uh, traditions uh, and false belief uh, all this was swept away and the uh, word of god was searched uh, how by lighting a candle what is the meaning of candle in the bible huh? the word of god uh, read uh, psalm 119 105 brother psalm 119 105 brother the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path very good thy word is a lamp unto my feet you see lighting this lamp only the church began to search for the truth then what happened that one last coin was found once it was found she began to rejoice and call her neighbors and her friends who is his neighbor who is his friends we'll see now let us see what are the 10 important coins that means the 10 important truths in the bible you see the first coin is the creation huh? what is the creation what does the bible say you see the bible says that man was created in the image of god he was created from the dust of the ground and made in the image and likeness of god you know dear brethren but what does today the whole world believe the whole world believes today uh, the darwin's theory that man came from the ape you see man came from the monkey huh? and slowly the chimpanzee became ape and ape became uh, a, you see uh, hunter uh, and the stone age was there uh, and slowly iron age came now you are in the computer age you see that's what the world believes uh, huh? what does the bible say did man create uh, man from a monkey no man was created from the dust not from the monkey dear brethren and they tell that this is really million millions of years before that man was created no the bible doesn't say so you see bible says that it has been a few thousand years that man was created the bible gives exactly the data so this is the first coin the exact meaning of creation of man man was not created as a monkey it not form automatically from the amoeba or protozoa if it was so why today the monkeys are remaining the monkeys or chimpanzees are remaining chimpanzees why don't they develop and become into a human being and why don't uh, human beings further develop into some other else why they are stopping to be only at the human being level dear brethren therefore this is the first coin and the second coin is related to the first coin that is death what did god say to adam you don't eat the fruit thereof if you eat the fruit thereof what will happen brother hmm most of the what will happen you if can, you eat the fruit you can be like uh, huh? god you can be like god then that is what satan told what did god tell uh, no no you 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 can't you won't be die Ah, well, what did God tell? If you eat the fruit, what will happen to you? What did God tell to Adam and Eve? If you eat the fruit, what will happen? Then uh, you will die from ah, this prison. You will die, isn't it? What did God say to Adam? If you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. You see, now what is the meaning of death? Ta? Uh, that means uh, the last moment you leave your breath uh, is it death no from birth to the day you go to the grave the entire thing is death that you have and therefore what did god uh, do to adam he condemned them and cast them out of uh, garden of eden in genesis 3 chapter 18 and 19 says uh, uh, cursed is the ground for thy sake uh, thorns and thistles shall bring uh, the set of the bro Thou shall eat until thou go to the dust. And God, you see, if in His wisdom, not only condemned Adam, but the entire race of Adam into death. Therefore, we see now, huh? as in Adam, all die. Every man are dying in Adam. Read Romans five twelve, brother. Romans five twelve. Where, 
wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passes upon all men for that we all have sinned mm -hmm. you see as by one man sin entered into the world and by that sin death and this death passed upon everybody because uh, God condemned everybody into sin you see dear brethren huh? so the people everybody are dying today why because of sin the wages of sin is what death isn't it not eternal torture hmm? we have seen the subject now brother soul hmm? and the hell we seen the subject what is the meaning of hell in the bible brother most brother where is hell 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 uh, i think it's actually it's not the place but it uh, it's like imagination on the chapter of revelation is one okay where is that imagination where is that imagination where, where do you find that imagination where, where can we find that imagination no, imagine, on this earth. A, no, no, imagination. I think I said, uh, I, I want to say that sign is a okay. sign. Tell us language. Ah, okay, where is it? <laughs> Isn't huh? it on Revelation? In Revelation. No, in earth, where is it? In Revelation, is there, in Bible, is there? Okay. In earth, where is it? Where, where, where can we see the uh, L in earth? Huh? Earth, I think. Tell me. You know it, <laughs> but you have forgotten it. Forgotten it. I'll give you a clue. Bro, huh? inside, uh, inside this uh, land. Ah, where? From on the surface of the earth, maybe. Ah, on the surface of the earth. You know what is that one? Actually, huh? that is huh? grave, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? That is the grave, dear brethren. So. In the Bible, huh? hell means what? Grave. We, say, we studied that one, no? The Hebrew and the Greek yeah. word, Hades, Sheol, Gehenna, Tartaro. Huh? You have forgotten it. You see? So, in the Bible, that is grave. So, what is after death? If you see, there is nothing after death. Uh, therefore, the second coin. You see, the first coin, the second coin are related. God created man in his own likeness and gave him the condemnation of death. Not that he is going to be tortured in hell forever and ever. Okay, brother. The third coin is related to the second coin. Just because the wages of sin is death, the third coin is the ransom. Jesus died for us on the cross. For why? Because he paid a ransom for everybody. Read brother John, uh, sorry, Mark 10 45. Read brother Mark 10 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be minister unto, but to minister and to give him and to give his life a ransom for many. Ah, give his life a ransom for many. Ah, so, what is the benefit of the ransom? You see, just because Jesus paid the ransom to Adam. All that are in the graves shall come forth, uh, you see, in the resurrection. That's what Jesus said, no? John 5.28. Uh, marvel not at this, uh, for the hour is going to come. All that are in the graves are going to come back. Uh, we see in the subject of ransom. Remember that the, the second class itself is the ransom class. Uh, it is one God and one mediator between man, Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, you see, God and man, that is man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom. You see, the word ransom in Greek is anti-Lutheran. Okay? So, Jesus not only paid ransom for Christians, he gave for the entire world. How? How is it possible for one man to die to everybody? It was possible because he paid his life to only one man, that is Adam. If he pays that life to Adam, automatically as everybody is condemned to death in Adam, Everybody will be resurrected in Christ. Okay, this is the third coin. And the fourth coin is justification. You see, justification by faith. See, we are all sinners. Okay, nobody is perfect before God. But yet, uh, we have access, access to God's throne. How? 
it is by our faith by faith all our sins are forgiven jesus said no if any man believes on me all his sins are forgiven how is it not literally forgiven but by faith you see read brother romans 117 brother romans 117 for therein is the kingdom the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith mm, the just shall live by faith this coin was found by martin luther martin luther had so much of doubts regarding the uh, rituals and ordinances uh, in the roman catholic system but once uh, you see he read this verse he came to know that uh, the just shall live by faith it is only by faith that we are justified before god read with the romans 5 1 but huh? therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ mm, it is justification by faith not by our works so it is not because of our belief or uh, any confession or uh, doing any rituals or prayer or uh, what do you say huh? uh, taking the rosary nothing all those things uh, will never get us righteousness so many people in this world have weird imagination of getting righteousness of pleasing god but what does the bible say we can only please god and get justified only by faith once if we have faith in christ then god gives us this rope of righteousness and through this rope of righteousness we are justified before god okay so not by confession not by giving offerings to the lord okay once uh, they had this belief but when martin luther came and read all these things and all he brought everything to light you see and he burnt all this uh, you see doctrines of uh, the roman catholic system so that's the you see fourth coin justification by faith now fifth coin is sanctification sanctification means what consecration or living a life pleasing to god this is what our lord did at the age of 30 years he immersed himself you see at river jordan and god anointed him with the holy spirit so it is the same thing we need to do after receiving the justification from god we need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice okay read romans 12 1 brother romans 12 1 I beseech you, therefore, veteran, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your responsible service. Which is your reasonable service. Offer your bodies oh, as a reason. living sacrifice. Okay? So, that is making a covenant with God. That uh, from today, I am going to offer myself as a living sacrifice. We have studied about this one in the church class. You see, huh? there are difference between a believer in this world and a follower of Christ. So a believer in uh, Christ just believes in Christ. But the follower of Christ, what does he do? He follows the first step of Jesus. What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, what he should do, brother? He must, he must uh, be, he must leave their uh, family he must uh, give their uh, wives, children, wealth and follow God. Hmm. If you leave everybody, then we'll be alone now. We'll become father and nun. Uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Good. Matthew 16.24. Read Matthew 16.24. What is the meaning of it? We'll see. Brother. Matthew 16.24. Brother, huh? Matthew 16.24. Okay, it's written here, Matthew 16, 24. Mm. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mm. Deny himself? Yeah. Take up his cross and follow me. Okay, but then what you uh -huh. said was correct, but it should be it is in a different, you see. Yeah. Wait. Now that we need to literally sacrifice our life and family and all and leave everybody and go in a, like a sannyasi. Okay? So see, here in the divine plan chat we can see, R is a place of sinners. 
So yen is the place of justifications. Once we believe in Christ, we come to this level. But there's one more step we need to go. The plain yam. Jesus actually, when he took baptism, he came to this level. So this is the plane of sacrifice or sanctification where you deny yourself. Carry the cross means take responsibility for Christ's sake and follow his footsteps, follow his teachings. Okay, the sixth coin. So which is the sixth coin? If you see, the sixth coin is election. What do you mean by election? So many people believe now that uh, uh, even before we are born, we are chosen by uh, God uh, in our mother's womb. You see? Actually, if you see, nobody is chosen from mother's womb. Okay? God has selected a group. We have studied about this one in the church class. That uh, church means uh, there is a little flock. And what is the number of the little flock, brother? Do you know the number of little flock? Little flock's number. The church. How many members are the church? Who is going to be part of the bride of Christ? What is the number? Do you remember? Um, we, we studied in the book of... 144,000. Very good. Brother. Excellent. So that is the 144,000 who was sealed, you see, with the God's Holy Spirit. These are the people who are going to be faithful to God until they die. Therefore, Jesus said, no, many are called, few are chosen. You see, many are called to the truth. Though. But among them, only few are chosen to sacrifice and still faithful, it is only few people. So, God has not selected individuals, but he has selected that group. And let us read, what is the qualification to be of that group? Ephesians 1.4, brother. Ephesians 1.4. According as he had chosen us into him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ah, he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Not that he has chosen individuals like uh, Raju, Ashish, or Mosab. No, but he has chosen the church, the entire church. Anybody can be in that part of the church, but how should they be? They should be holy without blame before in, in love. Love should be there. You see? So this is the qualification. Apostle Paul also tells us in Romans 8.29. Read brother. What is the qualification? Romans 8.29. For whom he did for new, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many uh, see, he determined first only that how should we be? We should be like whom? Son of man. Yes. Jesus Christ. Okay. So this qualification God has chosen before the foundation of the world, not individuals. If any of the individuals, let it be anybody in this world, if they achieve the target, definitely God will give them the, you see, immortal life. Therefore, this immortal life is promised to this uh, little flock. Okay, brother. Okay, now, seventh coin. The seventh coin is the truth about God. Now, you tell me, uh, who is our God? How many persons? How many persons is our God? Tell me, brother. How, how many gods we have? We have only one God. He is Almighty God. Very good. Very good, brother. So what about Jesus? Who is he? He is, he is Son of God. Very good. That's what the Bible says. There's one God, one mediator between God and man. Man Christ Jesus. Okay? Read. First Corinthians 8, 5 and 6, brother. For though there be that are called God's whether in heaven or in earth, as there be God many and Lord many. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we be him. Uh -huh. 
is only Full one fighting. god uh, is a god almighty we got only one lord uh, that is our lord jesus is very very important so we have even seen the nature of god that god has got four attributes okay okay now eighth coin now eighth coin is jesus second coming so when is jesus going to come when is he going to come, come? come soon soon oh very good now jesus said that one 2000 years before even after 2000 <laughs> years if it doesn't come how soon is it brother yeah. <laughs> that is really a very joke huh? coming soon 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 huh? if i tell to you that i'll come and meet you in japan very soon even after 2000 years if i don't come <laughs> what will you do <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we can we can also know that uh, for god 1000 years is like one day <laughs> super very good vasan brother excellent so we'll see <laughs> how soon <laughs> okay we'll shortly see the subject of what second coming correct no okay how about second coming it is given in the bible or not is it given in the bible given Ah, given. Then how soon? We need to study from the Bible, no? Then only we'll come to know. Ah, Bible says, no, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven ah, with a shout, like a sound of archangel. Ah, so, Jesus will come with a trumpet, ah, blowing all the angels will blow the trumpet and come. Okay? Ah, we'll see. Yeah. And now let us read. When Jesus is going to come, will we be there on the earth or not? Read Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. What happens when Jesus comes? Hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If hmm. any man hear my voice and open the door, hmm. I'll come hmm. into him and will sup with him and hmm. hear with me. Uh -huh. See, when Jesus comes, he tells, I'll stand at the door and knock. If any man opens, I will come with him and sup with him, sir. That means what? When Jesus comes, the church will be there on the earth. So we can identify Jesus. So how are we going to identify Jesus? We are going to study all those things in the parable. It is, the clue is given in the parable of the ten virgins. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> it is also given in the book of Daniel also. So we are going to study in very detail. Okay? Now let us come to the ninth coin and the last coin. Now, which is this one? This is about a thousand year reign of Christ. Now, why it was lost? In all the churches, they speak everything. But do they speak about thousand year reign? Mm, yeah. Oh, they speak I about thousand years. It's not common in all zones, but uh, some few. Some few. Really. Good. Very good. We appreciate it. But what do they speak about thousand years, sir? The thousand years Jesus will come and judge everybody, judge everybody. Correct, no? Huh? Correct, no, brother? <laughs> Probably. Probably, yes. But there is a lot of things that is going to happen in the thousand years. Sir. We need to see that one also, no? Huh? What is the things that will happen? It is not only judgment. Uh, you see, dear brother, all the dead people will come back to life. Their ears and eyes will be opened. Today, yeah, even though yeah. they have their eyes and ears, can they see the truth? Can they hear the truth, brother? No. No. In the resurrection, all the dead people will come back to life on the same earth. Their ears yeah, will yeah. be opened. Their eyes will be opened. Then they will see the truth. Read Isaiah 29 18, brother. Isaiah 29 18. And in that they shall the deaf hear the word of the book, and the eye of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Mm -hmm. In that day, in the thousand year day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book. Eyes, see which book? Huh? School book. In that, uh, in that day, brother, everyone will know the truth. No? Ah, everyone will know the truth. Sir. This has to be spoken in the churches. Why do they not speak? There will be a highway of holiness. Remember three ways? Huh? We studied the class of three ways, no, brother? Narrow way, broad way, then? 
विच में हाईवे आई से थर्टी फाइव दे विल बी हाईवे ऑफ होलीनेस एवरीबडी विल कम बैक फ्रॉम द ग्रेव इमेजिन व्हाट जॉय व्हाट पीस एंड व्हाट कंफर्ट हां इन द थाउजेंड इयर्स व्हाट विल द एनिमल ईट नो एनिमल विल नॉट बी एम्पल फॉर मैन हां बट एनिमल्स विल बी देयर और नॉट the animal will also be there ah, very good lion lion it will be there brother lion cheetah leopard uh, everyone every, everything will be there uh, okay. thousand i think uh, i in my thoughts i have learned that no god actually god wants to um, uh, hmm. in thousand years uh, before he was, he was planning to do the same things to adam but hmm. but it cannot be fulfilled no Hmm. Read Isaiah eleven six to nine. Read with us Isaiah eleven chapter six to nine. Isaiah eleven six to nine is written here. Eleven chapter uh, six to nine. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, mm -hmm. and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, mm -hmm. and the calf and the young lion. Hmm. and the fighting and the hmm. plotting together hmm. and a little child shall lead them hmm. and the cow and the bear shall feed your young ones shall lie down together and the hmm. lion shall eat straw like the ox Arre. and the sucking lion <laughs> shall eat uh, what brother straw straw are you your lion will become pure vegetarian uh. <laughs> then uh, okay. at that time very good brother in the thousand years so where are so, these things so i think the, the uh, flesh uh, <laughs> flesh is not for eating brother it's not flesh for the flesh flesh is for eating now in the thousand years no flesh no non vegetarian only pure vegetarian so before god uh, before the, uh, on the creation uh, on the face of adam So God had uh, created Adam. Uh, God had created lion also. Uh, carnivorous, right? No, 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 no. Read. Very good question. Super question, brother. Read Genesis first chapter, brother. Um, sorry, second chapter. Uh, um. One minute. Fifth, uh, fifth verse. You read, brother. Huh? Second chapter. Fifth. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Second chapter. Uh, first chapter. Verse twenty-nine and thirty, brother. Ah. Uh. And God said, "Behold, I have given." You every herbs bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a hmm? tree yielding seed, hmm? to you is shall hmm? be for meat. Hmm. See, Sarah was given what food? Ah, non-vegetarian, vegetarian. Ah. Huh? Uh, non-vegetarian. Re read that verse again, brother. God is telling to Adam hmm, that what is your food? Read verse twenty-nine again. So it shall be for meat. What does it mean? Meat means what? Ah, uh? it shall be for you to eat instead of meat. This is uh, what you have to eat. So what you were supposed to eat? Read that verse again, twenty nine. Okay. And God said, "Behold, I have given you every herb, every herb, ah, uh. yeah, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of us." Every tree. tree. Uh. To you, it shall be for meat. It shall be for your food. Meat means what? It shall be for your uh. food. Okay. So, yeah. What did God tell to Adam to eat? Vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Only vegetarian. Only vegetarian. Read next verse. There is a proof there also. Thirtieth verse. Ah. Uh. Thirty-first. Ah. Uh. 
30 verse 30 next verse and, and to every beast of the earth and, and to every beast. beast of the earth every animal of the earth uh. and to every four of the year and to everything that creeps upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green hog for me Arre, and, for every for beast of the earth what is given for food it seems what is given for meat herbs every herb correct no brother every herb is given yeah. for meat for every beast of the field so no, uh, the meat is written here for the food right correct brother see there is a small uh, footnote given there correct no yeah 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 uh, food I, you read in a nepali bible read you got nepali bible yeah, I have never mentioned. Please read verse 29 and 30. We will see what is what was his menu, veg or non-veg. We'll <laughs> file a case, don't worry. If it is non-veg, we'll file a case. We'll ask God why you are given so much of confusion. Ask. Read, brother. Genesis 1, 29 and 30. Okay, brother. Oh. Mm. Can I read in Nepali, brother? Mm. Read, brother, please. Ani permission to do this. Here we are going to be able to do this. We are going to be able to do this. We are going to be able to do this. We are going to be able to do this. We are Food. Uh, and that was that is the proper translation. See? So what Adam ate? Uh, veg or non veg? Totally is vegetarian. Vegetarian. Now read verse 30. And if you go harik posu, akasko harik ponsi, the zamin matsal halbani harik jantu, harik padi, just not jibansa, niaruko ahara ko ninti mo. Vanaspati What means that means vegetarian, non vegetarian. Yes, uh, God has given uh, hops on their uh, appetite. No, correct. So, this is going to be restored back in God's kingdom. Okay, yeah, yeah. sir. <laughs> Ah, that is the last coin. That is the reason. What did the woman do? She lost that coin. No, what did she? What did she do? She searched. She got it. As soon as she got it, what did she do? Tell me, what did she do? In the she, parable, we read no brother. She searched the coin. She got the coin. What did she do with the coin? Because uh, she cannot. No, no, no. What did the woman do with the coin in the parable? If you read, no. Read it again. Let us read. No problem. Come to look. Okay, with the book of Luke, 16 chapter, 15 chapter. Chapter 15, verse 9. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. And when she has found it, she called her friend and her neighbor together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Mm. I have lost. What did she, what did she do with her? Yes, uh, she rejoiced. Uh, then? Calling, calling their neighbor. That, yes, that is the rejoicing, brother. We have the truth about thousand years. Rejoice! God's blessing is not only for us, but for the entire world. The whole world. Let it be Hindus, Muslims, Sikh, Buddhist, Atheist, everybody. Jesus died for everybody. He is going to return second coming for everybody. There is going to be salvation for everybody. There is going to be a resurrection for everybody. Everybody is going to come back to life. And this earth is going to be a beautiful garden of Eden. This truth 
nobody has everybody are dissolved in their own weird ideas today in the churches where is this coin where why this coin is not spoken of at all in the resurrection everybody will come why is not spoken everybody tells that as soon as a man dies he go his soul goes to hell or heaven then why is the resurrection this is the last coin so as we found that coin you see the real church what will she do she will not keep it for self she will witness to everybody think about the beautiful plan for everybody brother where the lion will eat straw you see the leopard and the calf will lie together a small child will play with it there will be no sickness no sorrow no pain no death at all this has to be shared to the suffering world not only to our friends not only to our christian friends but for neighbors for the whole world this is the meaning of that coin okay brother got it brother the last coin yes, yes brother so the, now the tenth coin is second death okay so second death means what uh, huh? we are all released from first death by sacrifice of jesus now what is the meaning of second death after coming to the knowledge of truth if we sin willfully then where will we go we will go to second death read hebrews then we will take this in detail in coming class but in short just read one verse hebrews sixth chapter Hebrews 6. Mm. Verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, uh, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open sin. They put him to open chain, crucifying Christ again. This is their behavior. Read Hebrews 10 26. It is more clear there. Hebrews 10 26. Okay. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of truth, there. Remain no more sacrifice for sins. Mm -hmm. See, uh, after learning strong. the truth, if we keep on sinning and uh, believing all uh, lies, then where will we go? There is no more sacrifice. Christ has died for our sins. But if we sin willfully, we will go to second. We will see in detail in the coming class. Now, how many coins were there? Ten. Ten. Mm, 10. So, if you have 5, will Christ accept us? We need to have 10. 10. Very good, brother. No, no, no. Brother. No problem, brother. 10 can you leave, brother? I'll have 9 coins. Means will Christ accept? No. No. Rebecca, to marry Isaac, how many camels did she feed with water? Um, Rebecca. 10. Uh, ten, correct. Uh, ten camels. Uh, see, in a ten Bible, ten, 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 ten. How many virgins? Parable. Ten virgins. You got it, no? So, we should have the complete truth. Truth should be there. Where? Where the coin should be there, brother? It should be in pocket or in uh, head. It, it needs to be shared for all. Uh -huh. That coin, we, we just can't keep it in a cupboard. Keep it safely, lock it the coin should be placed on the head. The woman, where did she put that band? On the head. Correct, no? Yeah. So head means what? We tell now you it don't have head at all. Head means what, means, brother? Uh, evidence for all. Correct. So head means understanding. You see? We tell now for the people, some people, the school teachers in the college and all, they tell you don't have head at all, man. Head means what? Brains, intelligence, knowledge, understanding. Huh? Correct, no? Head means what? Uh? Understanding. Uh, 
this has to be in our understanding in our mind it should be there in our heart only then can we become the bride of jesus correct now will jesus marry a foolish virgin no <laughs> then why is virgin why is have the 10 coins okay so this is the meaning of the parable of the 10 coins got it brother yes brother any doubts any questions no 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 